Hello friends, this is Carmen. Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. My channel is all about balcony gardening with succulents and cacti and house plants in an apartment setting. So if that's something that interests you, please do subscribe. Today I'm bringing you some plants that have really been doing well for me this month of April 2020. And we all know what's going on right now in history. So that they shall not be named but I've really been getting a lot of um, joy for my plants in, in growth this spring. Uh, the heat is starting to set here in, in Phoenix but I wanted to share with you some plants that are really really thriving for me both on the balcony and inside so stay tuned for that. So I figured we'd start off with some plants inside. Let's start off with the littlest one. And this little guy in this cute little <laughs> snail planter, I actually got this at the 99 cent store, um, which is a dollar store here in, in southern southwest area. This is a Diffenbachia camouflage. And I got this um, probably a couple months ago, maybe three, from Hertz Gardens. It was just teeny tiny in a little two inch pot and it had a couple of leaves on it only. I think this may be an original leaf, but the other one fell off, but all of these other ones, these three, are new to it, and look how healthy they are. And I can see, too, there's another growth coming in down at the bottom there. So it's doing really well. It's in a very chunky mix of um, coco coir mulch because I remember at the time I didn't have a coco coir brick which is the softer granular type of coco coir so I used the mulch one with a little bit of regular potting soil and perlite and um, some worm castings and it seems to like it I keep it evenly moist and it's in this east facing window and it loves it I think I need to turn it as you can see, everything's facing this way, so I'm probably going to have to turn the little guy. But um, this is a Diffenbachia camouflage. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to buy little plants, little two-inch plants, because look how well they do. And I, I think it was only like $5 from Hertz Gardens. But Diffenbachia camouflage. Okay, now we're going to go into a couple of hanging plants. And this is my Pothos Marble Queen. I've had her for probably three months, maybe four. Got her locally from um, Plant Stand of Arizona. And she she's real light right now because she needs watering. I took her down. She's normally hanging right up here. But I went ahead and took her down for a couple of reasons. One, I'm going to um, clean her up, but I'm going to propagate her. She's got some trails here, and I'm going to propagate those to get some more plants. And um, I wanted to check the soil and the uh, roots because I'm finding that I'm having to water this one quite a bit. Uh, she dries out fairly quickly, so I think that the nursery soil that she came in may need to be replaced. I don't see any roots coming out the bottom, so that may not be it. It may be that she can stay in a six inch pot like this, but just need fresh soil. Um, you know, the perhaps the nutrients in the nursery soil that she came in has basically run out. But when I got her, she didn't have a whole lot of variegation on her. And this is one of her older leaves right there. You can see that it's kind of half and half and a lot of her new stuff, new leaves, are coming in much more variegated as you can see there. So I think that she really loves that dappled morning sunlight that she gets in this patio door here. Um, that seems to have brought out the variegation and the growth spurt in her because she was a lot smaller when I got her. But the growth spurt in her and enhanced more variegation in her leaves, her new ones, and I think her old ones too. But she's doing so well there that I think it's time I have some more of her and um, give her some little TLC as far as some new soil. But this one, this Mar Pothos Marble Queen, 
is definitely a wonderful plant. And she's just been so happy this this month. She has no idea what's going on, but she's happy. Okay. Now, another beautiful hanging plant got a, at a local nursery, uh, Whitfield Nursery, and oh, I want to say about four months, maybe four or five months. This is the philodendron Rio or philodendron silver stripe and she has just been loving life. She is in my um, east facing window in my bedroom. She's hanging there right in front and so she gets some dappled filtered morning light and the rest of the day it's bright light um, and she's just been taken off the last couple of months. At first you know she kind of just sat there but she's really taking off now she was very compact when I got it, very tight and compact, but she's really stretching out now. And um, I took her down also for the same reason as the Marble Queen that I'm going to propagate her and get some more of these um, and give her a good watering and cleaning. Now her soil I think is doing okay still. Um, it's not as dry as the other one, so I'm, I don't think I'm going to split her or get her new soil right now, but I do want to propagate her and see how she does. The one thing that I've noticed about these philodendron rails or silver stripe is how curly their uh, trails are. Uh, I was looking at one when I took her down just so so curly. I don't know if you can tell there as opposed to um, the other philodendrons like the heart leaf or the lemon lime. Their, their trails can be more, um, they're thinner I think, and um, looser um, and straighter. These are, these are very rigid, thick, and curly, which is really unusual for them. But I'm anxious to see how she does in water propagation. I would love to have some more of her um, to put around the apartment. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing with her next. She um, really doesn't give me any trouble at all. Um, she's in good soil still. She doesn't dry out too soon. And she's doing well in that filtered morning sunlight. You know, the pothos and... Um, Philodendrons do love their bright light, but they can take um, a little bit of morning sun also. And it seems to be doing her wonders. So that is uh, the Philodendron Real Philodendron Silver Stripe. Look at the unique variations on those. That was cool. And some of the leaves are like long, you know, which. I don't know, if you have one of these plants, friends, does yours do the same thing? Um, you know, I don't know if it's just a, a hybrid thing or, or what, but um, definitely different than all of my other philodendrons, uh, vining ones, whereas the leaves, you know, they can come out long like that or very long heart-shaped. Very unusual, but I love her. <sighs> Rosie. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, some plants out from the balcony. And this little guy is my bonsai tree. This is a Portulacara Afra or elephant bush variegated. And I've had this, actually I bought it as a, um, I think it was a quart size container of the Portulacara Afra variegated bush. Um, and then I split it up. I put some in some other pots and then I saw this trunk and I thought that would make a wonderful bonsai tree. So I potted it up in this little bonsai pot with some succulent mix and put some rocks around it and I found this little elephant. I don't want to take him out. I found this little jade elephant at uh, Goodwill I think it was and I put him in there because I thought you know elephant bush and the jade elephant. Okay. So anyways, the last couple of years I've been uh, training it by trimming it to be in this almost canopy-like formation for a uh, bonsai tree. 
and it is outside 100% of the time in my balcony on my table. Um, it wintered there, did fine. Over the winter, this plant will lose little leaves. I had a subscriber ask me one time um, because I have another video on Portrait Clara Afra Care, and I'll link that above here. But she asked me if it was normal for the leaves to fall off because she was worried about her plant, and it was a variegated one like this. And yes, mine's doing the exact same thing. And actually, before I brought this one out on camera, I was with my little needle nose uh, flyer things uh, taking these out, or tweezers, taking uh, the dead leaves out of here that had shriveled up. But I know that I need to trim it again because right there you see a little growth happening there. So I will trim that up and I'll probably trim some on this side because I can feel that it's starting to lean a little too much this way. So to encourage growth maybe more this way, I'm going to trim it over here and there's a one back here. But these make wonderful bonsai trees. If you want to get into something that's easy to care for in, in the bonsai, this type of plant, a Portia Vicara Afra, doesn't have to be variegated. I just happen to find the variegated one. But you can do a, um, the regular green ones will work just as well. Um, and I'm probably going to do one of those next time. These are wonderful bonsai plants. And this one has just been growing easy to trim. I think it's just adorable. Look at that. Okay, so that's Portugal Afro variegated. Okay, this guy here, well there's actually two in this pot. I'll talk about that in a second. But this here is, a, it was sold to me as a philodendron lickety split at Lowe's a couple years ago I think. Um, in a quart size container, small. That's what the label said. But in looking at pictures online, I don't know, lickety splits have much more indentation here in their leaves than mine does. And I don't know if it's because mine is immature and the, that happens to more mature plants or what. But I'm thinking maybe it's a philodendron hope, Selim, I think it's Selim, hope, little hope, I rather. It could be that. So if you have an idea, friends, of what this is, lickety split or little hope, let me know. Either way, I love this guy. This year, he's really taken off for me. I've led him outside all winter long and under the balcony canopy there um, and he did well. I think we only had one night of frost this year and I covered him up then but in the springtime and a lot of the winter I would put him out further um, so he can get some direct sun in the morning um, in the east facing balcony and he just loved it. He just went crazy with leaves. I mean there's another one coming out right there. Um, but now, end of April, that it's starting to get warm here. Like today, it was in the low 90s. And this weekend, we'll probably, <laughs> well, we will hit our first 100 end of April. So that's usually when it tends to happen. But so now I've moved him back into the corner over here of the balcony where um, it's shaded from the sun. I think it gets maybe a few minutes of morning sun, early morning sun, and the rest of the time it's in the shade um, to protect it from the sun because if I were to leave him where he normally was, this would have happened. I think this is, yeah, this is burned from too much sun, but the rest of the leaves are doing wonderfully, and it's just growing. It's got its roots under there. You can see it down in there aerial roots and it's kind of like a clumping yeah. but this other plant that's in here you're probably wondering about that one this one is a Tritoscancia purple heart and the other name starts with a P but I'll put it here Palladia or something like that and um, this is a beautiful uh, ground cover this goes really well here in the southwest um, it does better in zone 10 so it's popular here as um, 
a ground cover. My mom, actually this is from her plant, she has it as a beautiful um, hanging plant in her front porch. And it's got to be, well I think at the longest it was about, it was taller than me, it was six feet in length. And then one day the monsoon came and then there was a big wind and knocked it over and oh my gosh, she was so upset. Because these are very, very fragile, these stems on this um, Purple Hearts. Um, and they break easily. They're easy to propagate. I've got some propagating actually and rooting to put some more back in here. Um, but they are very fragile and they do break very easily. So it's a Tritoscanthia Purple Heart. But such beautiful, big, velvety looking uh, purple leaves and these tiny, tiny, delicate flowers. Bloom spring and summer. This is the first one that's given me this season. So spring and summer it blooms. Easy to propagate when it doesn't get a whole bunch of light. <laughs> you can see down here there's one that's a little bit more greener right there. That is one that was, because it was sitting like this, this was the back. When it doesn't get a lot of light, it turn, they come out more green. It'll grow, but it will be a little bit smaller and it'll be more green. To get this purple lushness, you got to give it some direct sun. Okay? But it will do well indoors as a hanging plant. If you have an east or south facing window, that it will get uh, some direct morning light, let's say. Um, it will do well there, but yeah, it does need direct sun for at least a few hours to get that deep purple. But this is kind of a, a double winner here, you know, the philodendron, lickety split slash possibly little hope, and the tridescantia purple heart. So these are doing wonderful. And they're going to spend the summer outside in the balcony. Oh. So those are some plants that are really doing well for me. Um, I'm starting to get things ready for the summer. You know, a lot of people in the rest of the country are anxious for spring and summer to be here so they can bring their plants outside and I'm bringing plants inside or giving them shade. And I'll very soon have a video for you about my balcony and how I prepare it for uh, summer and what I do for my plants to protect them from the summer heat and the direct sun too. Um, so stay tuned for that, okay? So if you enjoyed this video, friends, please do give it a thumbs up. That helps me out tremendously. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do and hit that notification bell because uh, that way you won't miss any of my videos, okay? And uh, stay tuned for the next one. It'll be up very soon. Thanks so much, friends. I appreciate your visiting with me today. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.